Hello everybody, my name is Patrick Dennis with Eureka and today we're going to go through a video. This one is uh, you know, another part of our Eureka Labs series where we take Eureka out of the box and then we sort of configure it, we extend it, we you know, use other tools in the Salesforce platform to make it even more powerful than it already is as it comes out of the box. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways that you can use Eureka across many different clouds on the Salesforce platform. Um, but we're going to be talking about field service lightning today and what it looks like to create checklists that FSL um, at field service lightning users can fill out while they're in the field. Uh, so really quick for those of you that have no idea what we do, we are a Salesforce native forms application that allows people both in the field on a mobile device or on a desktop uh, user experience to be able to fill out forms, uh, be guided through a survey or an assessment, an inspection, and then all of that information gets passed back to Salesforce, updating objects in the system, firing off automation, et cetera. Again, we're entirely native to the platform and our mobile application works both on or offline. And when it comes to actually building these forms, right inside of Salesforce is where we do that. We have a drag and drop editor that makes it easy for business users to be able to create forms and deploy them out to their people in the field or people who are using desktop forms um, with ease. Now, no code required here for, for um, building out Eureka forms. And as it pertains to field service lightning, like I said, um, we work with just about every Salesforce product that you can imagine, um, but a lot of times people think of Eureka and Field Service Lightning together because of what I said earlier, where you have people out in the field who are doing, they're, they're fixing things, they're conducting repairs, they're doing inspections. A lot of times they're using the Field Service Lightning mobile application, but where Eureka comes in handy is that we can extend FSL mobile uh, and use the Eureka mobile app really seamlessly with it to fill out complex checklists for when the technician arrives on site uh, and actually starts doing their work. And these forms can map information to things like the work order in Salesforce, the service appointment, et cetera. And as, as well, you know, we can guide technicians through these particular procedures and checklists um, as they're collecting information for us in these forms. So the use case today is, like I said, we're going to be talking about the context of a field service technician in FSL. Um, and in this case, we have three very specific requirements. We need a field service technician to complete complex checklists from the field while they're doing their job. So we're going to introduce Eureka into the mix. The second requirement is that we potentially need several different checklists to be completed per work order. So when I get there, I need to fill out several checklists before I'm allowed to leave. And so we're going to accomplish that requirement too with Eureka. Um, and then th the third requirement is that these different checklists can vary depending on what the work type is in Salesforce. So if I'm going out to do an inspection, I might have, you know, two checklists that I need to fill out. But if I'm going out to do some sort of break fix, I might have a different set of checklists that I need to fill out. And we need to be able to dynamically change what the technician sees so that they can just easily access the right checklists when they arrive to do their job. So uh, again, just showing you some examples of what it looks like to access checklists from FSL Mobile. On the left, you can see we can actually deep link directly to a specific checklist. Um, which is what you, again, what you see on the left-hand side there. Um, and this is great if you just have the same kind of checklist that you need to fill out every single time for you know, each job that you do. You can just click on the button and immediately be taken right into a single checklist. But that's not our requirement today. Today, we need to go to a group of checklists. So you can see on the right, when we can click a button inside of FSL Mobile, we're actually taken to a list of checklists that users can pick from and then fill them out from there. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And for those of you that are thinking like, you know, what's the technical stack that we're going to be using to accomplish all this stuff? Here's a, just a basic list of what I'm doing. 
uh, we'll demo the the solution first, and then I'll come back and teach you. You know, we'll lift up the hood, uh, and I'll show you some of the underlying um, technology that's going on underneath. So the first is we're definitely using Eureka, Salesforce, and Field Service Lightning. We're using Eureka Mobile and FSL Mobile. We're going to be using app extensions. So again, for those of you that are familiar with FSL, we can create app extensions that allow us to extend you know, links and URLs and whatnot. And we're going to use that for the deep linking over into the Eureka Mobile app. We're going to be using Eureka Mobile Cards, which I'll talk about later. For those of you that are familiar with kind of the declarative automative, uh, automation capabilities, we're going to use Process Builder and Flow inside of Salesforce. And then a list of some of the objects that we're going to be utilizing. Work order service appointments and work types are mostly with the field service product. And then forms and form templates are a part of the Eureka product. And then the last one is a custom object that I created today called work type form templates. Uh, and it kind of just ties a lot of what we're talking about together. So that's the technical stack for this particular use case that we're going to be going through. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to demo it to you first. And then, like I said, we'll come back and check on what, you know, what technology we use. So we're going to start on the dispatcher console. Then we'll show my mobile application in a particular service appointment. Then when we arrive on site as a technician, we need to go to our checklist. So we'll jump over to Eureka Mobile. We'll fill out a checklist and submit it. And then we'll come back to FSL Mobile to do maybe our next service appointment for the day. And then, like I said, we'll, we'll, I'll show you kind of how it all works. So on the left-hand side of the screen, what you see is the dispatcher console inside of Field Service Lightning. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you see my mobile app where I have the field service lightning mobile application pulled up to a particular inspection. <clears throat> now, uh, like I said, we've got, uh, we, you know, we've got two different appointments given to me today, and we can see those on the right-hand side of the screen here, where we say appliance repair and inspection. And in this case, maybe I'm somebody who needs to go out and fix a piece of equipment, which is what we're gonna do with that appliance repair. So we'll jump into this one here. And when I click into this particular service appointment, we can see where I need to go. We can see when the appointment's going to start, as well as any other helpful pieces of information about this. Now, when I get there, that's the key here. So I'll navigate to the appointment just fine using the field service mobile application and how it can extend out to Google Maps and Waze and all those other things. But when I get there, I can click on this little menu down here, and it, will, it shows me a whole set of options that I can pick from. I'm going to click on the button that says View Checklists, which is a button that I created that allows us to jump over to Eureka. Now, when we click this, it will take me to the Eureka mobile app, and immediately it will take me to the work order record that I have inside of Eureka with a list of the forms that I need to fill out. So as a technician, I can look and say that I need to do two things here. First of all, I need to, you know, run through this appliance repair checklist, which will probably be guiding me through a process. And then I also need to maybe do a pre-job safety briefing where I need to fill out some you know, information before I even maybe go on site. Um, this could even be related to some of the COVID stuff that we're seeing today, right? Where you know, anymore we might need to be filling out checklists um, before we even walk into somebody's home or walk into a particular facility we might need to fill out a checklist that says that you know we have done all the proper things to, to proceed. So that could be here too. In this case, I could jump into one of these checklists and immediately you can see here, this is where I can start filling out my form, um, which obviously for those of you that have seen other Eureka demos is going to kind of bend uh, and open up new questions based on answers to previous questions. I could take photos if I wanted to. Uh, I can show helpful pieces of information and guidance to my users. Etc. Now, when I get done with this form, I can click submit, uh, and that information will be passed back to Salesforce. Um, if I'm offline, it'll just hold it here on my device and wait until I can find internet connectivity. But again, here we can see that that first checklist is submitted, and now the second one is still in new, so maybe I could jump into that one next and fill it out. Um, and then when I'm done here, I can just click on the left, you know, up in the left hand corner, and we can see go right back to field service. And now I'm right back on the FSL mobile app where I can go ahead and change that appointment status uh, and then move on with my day. So that's what it looks like kind of quickly uh, in terms of you know being able to get to a job, 
be able to click on a button and see all the checklists that I need to fill out and then be able to move on with my work. Um, and what's even better about this is all those checklists are accessible inside of Salesforce. So if I want to go over to the forms tab here, um, I can have a look at what forms you know, were submitted today. And we can even see those are the two forms that we were just working on uh, are made available to us inside of Salesforce. And I can even see one of them has been submitted by Pat and one of them still has yet to be submitted. If we wanted to know the geolocation of that particular form, we can look at that. And then obviously everything, every single question uh, underneath as we filled it out on the mobile device is now made available to us uh, right here inside of Salesforce uh, for us to report on, automate on, etc. So that's kind of what it looks like to submit a form back into Salesforce. Now, how did I do this? Like, how, what are the, what's the technology that's happening in the background to make all this kind of stuff happen? And so there's a couple of different things that I would that I would draw your attention to. First of all, let's talk about our work orders. So inside of Salesforce, we have a whole list of work orders that need to be completed um, that our technicians are going out to work on. So for any one of these, let's just jump into the one that I just used, 807. Now what we can see here is I've got some basic information about the work order. And most importantly, in this case, I've got a work type, which is a, a pretty critical component to the FSL product. And so let's jump into that work type because that's actually the thing that's driving a lot of the, um, a lot of the automation here. So if I go up to the work type, this is appliance repair. This is the work type that's associated with me actually doing this particular break fix. And we can see here, all this stuff is out of box FSL stuff, right? How many minutes is this supposed to take? Uh, how, when is the due date supposed to be set based on when the when the work order is actually created? But here's actually a custom object that I made for this demo video, for this use case. This is not out of box for FSL and it's not out of box for Eureka. I made it. But what we're doing here is this is technically a junction object between the work type and our Eureka form templates. So here I can say, you know, for this appliance repair work type, I want to make sure that we're filling out an appliance repair form and I also want to make sure that we're filling out a pre-job safety briefing. So I can set those form templates here on the form type and then we can use automation in Salesforce to create those forms every single time a work order is created with this particular work type. So again, I'm going to get really deep in here, but I want to make sure that you understand uh, where we're driving some of this stuff. So I'm using Process Builder to make this happen. So anytime a work order is created, we check to see if we need to create some forms and we fire a flow. And inside of flow, we're basically getting those work types from that, um, or we're getting those form templates from that work type and we're going ahead and we're creating some form records and associating them with the work order inside of Salesforce. And it's all happening automatically. And what does it look like here? If we go into our work order, we can actually see those forms in a related list inside of our, uh, inside of our work order page in Salesforce. Um, and these are the forms that are ultimately going to show up inside of the Eureka app when we do that deep link over. So I could just even clone this. Let's see if I can just clone this work order here and we'll create a new one. So this is probably going to be 809. And I even have a little checkbox that says auto create forms from work type. And when I click save, this is going to create a brand new work order, same address and everything, same work type. And immediately as I create the work order, we can go over and see the forms have already been created. These were just generated from that process builder and flow. When we looked back to the work type, looked at what form templates are needed for that particular work, what checklists do we need for that type of work, and then Salesforce Automation created the forms for us right here. And now from this moment on, if I go over to the dispatcher console and actually schedule this appointment out, I think this is 815, so we can go check uh, at service appointment 777. What we'll do is we'll even just schedule that to myself right here and when we see it inside of 
our dispatcher console, when I give it to myself, and we'll just we'll break some rules here, but I can schedule that appointment for myself, refresh my page here, and immediately we can see that service appointment, that second appliance repair that we just created. I can jump in, there's that brand new work order that we just created, and when I click view checklists, I'm taken over into that particular work order record in Eureka. Well, let's refresh it here really quick. There we go. I'm taking over into that work order record in Eureka and immediately what we'll see is there's work order number 815 and there's the two forms that I need to fill out, right? So this is all supposed to be happening automatically, seamlessly, so that the technicians don't know any different. They're just clicking on view checklists, and then those are the checklists that they need to fill out. So there's a lot going on here that allows us to be able to kind of create these, but that's a bit of what's going on underneath the hood in terms of the automation and the object settings, or the object setup um, that allows us to kind of do what I've showed you here. And then finally, what I'll do is I'm just gonna jump into Salesforce setup here really quick, and I'll show you what that deep link looks like. We have a lot of documentation on our website that helps guide you into building out the deep link. So, and I think we even have another couple of videos that teach you how to do this as well. But when we talk about the field service mobile settings, I'll zoom in here, and you can actually see we've created you know, a deep link called view checklists. And this is using our deep link scheme that allows us to jump into that particular work order record um, and allow us to see the checklists that have been made for this particular work order. So that's also an important thing to know is kind of how the deep link works. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on underneath the hood there. So overall, what did we just do? We use Field Service Mobile as well as um, Eureka Mobile as well as some Salesforce automation uh, and a custom object in here and, and you know some clever deep linking to allow us to be able to set different types of checklists on different for different types of work orders and when those work orders are created in Salesforce those checklists are automatically created too so that when our technicians go out in the field and click on view checklists, they can see all of the different forms that they need to fill out while they're doing that particular job. And those checklists can vary between different types of work. So that's one example of many different ways you can use Eureka, but I hope that it was informational. Um, thank you for watching. If you've made it all the way through this video, I appreciate you spending the time and, and learning about how Eureka and Field Service Lightning can work together. If you want to learn more about what you've just seen today, come to Eureka.io. We have so many resources on our website to teach you how Eureka can work for your particular use case when it comes to Salesforce forms. Um, if you have access to Org62 chatter groups, come find us there. We answer questions and we'd love to get involved with you there. And then finally, feel free to visit us on the Salesforce App Exchange uh, to install a trial of Eureka, to go and play around with the tool yourself and get familiar with how it works. Um, again, thank you so much for watching.